gonna be our starter for this week. It's called What's in a Name by Anna Anderson. I wanted to introduce, uh, I wanted to get more comfortable and familiar with Common Core. Depth of knowledge um, is an important tool, an important piece of Common Core, text-dependent questions, um, annotating and close reading. I tried to figure out a way to, to put those pieces all together. So the first day they'll read for comprehension and then do a, start doing a second reading where they'll, they're annotating and, and just underlining and circling. What do we circle, William? We circle key, um, key, or words that we don't know. Words or phrases that we don't know. Only two annotation symbols in today's close reading. What I always try to do before we uh, move on from the starter into maybe what were, were the bulk of our lesson that day, um, I like to have them, um, in this case, we, they did a think pair share where I presented a question to them, um, a very low level DOK one question where they were essentially just recalling information, summarizing what the article said and recalling it. This article is about a, a girl, a 15 year old girl was trying to sue the Iceland because she didn't like the name that she had. But because the law didn't let, didn't let them change it to their, they were still trying to, they're trying to go against the government. I mean, the law. It was an opportunity for kids that maybe were really struggling with the text um, to speak with a peer that uh, could maybe give a greater insight on what they were reading. I'm going to first give you just a couple of minutes to scan through and look at the words or phrases that you circled and the main ideas that you underlined. Maybe just one minute to do that, okay? And then I'm going to ask that you continue your annotations and today you're gonna to add a question. On Tuesday, the students were given, the text dependent question was, um, what is one justification for why Iceland uses a name registry? So I would believe that this is a little bit of a deeper question, having to really dig deep into the text. So I would say it's probably closer to a DOK level two question. What I was expecting the students to do was not just be able to understand the article. I wanted them to really be able to go and, and relate the material, find exactly where the article was stating the position, and then use textual evidence and explain what that textual evidence means. I really enjoy doing starters where the students stand and, and present and um, get a chance to work on speaking and listening because my, my student demographic, many of them are or were um, ELD students. They need the opportunity to speak. They need to be able to speak in as many opportunities as they can. When the students were expected to speak and present to the class, um, they were not only required to share in the article where they found the answer, but they were then required to take the textual evidence and then explain what it means. How, how does it apply to that question? One reason why Iceland wants us to use the name they have on the list is, what if the name is ridiculous, as it said in the article. And in the article, can you show us where you got that quote from, please? We are going to make connections. What does it mean when we're trying to make a connection to the text, Melanie? You have, it means that you have to connect something about you to the story. You have to connect something about yourself to the story. All right, thank you for staying on task until you heard the buzzer. If you're not done, I'll give you a, just a little bit more time to make your connection but I'm gonna project two questions today up there. I believe a big piece of Common Core is um, students on a weekly basis using tier two and tier three academic vocabulary. We're asking about what the word subjective means. Subjective, so, so think about that. I'll give you a couple of clues. If you look, if you can do me a favor and put a box around the word subjective, it's in the small column and right in the middle of the text when you find it. Read the sentences around it. Use your context clues. I always try to use at least one multiple choice question in the week. They are not allowed to just write a letter or a letter A because they have to write it out as an answer and state why. So they're always being expected to use textual evidence and or ju at least justify their answers. I used released um, SBAC 
questions, to formulate the question with two parts. One, what does essentially what does subjective mean? And then given the answer that they found with what subjective meant, how does that definition relate to the text? So what I want you to do is you're going to add the exclamation symbol wherever you found something that surprised you. And then what I want you to do is down here at the bottom in this little bottom margin, I want you to write a statement stating what surprised you and why. So on Thursday, I, was, I gave the students uh, another DOK level two question. It was the opposite side of the argument now. What I was doing was creating a DOK level two question to kind of explicitly check on their understanding of the central idea in the text. This activity really required students to use textual evidence multiple times. My answer is um, they want to be able to choose their names because in the article it says it seems like a basic human right to be able to name your child what you want. All right, so we're on our last day with our starter and our article, What's in a Name? We have spent the last four days reading and annotating, do a doing multiple close readings and annotations on the article. And today we're going to be given a question that's going to really require you to think deeply, not only about what you've read, but also about what your opinion is and how it applies to your life and um, one of the, then the outsiders, the novel that we're reading right now. Then what they're required to do is really think about it and start digging through the article, looking at their annotations, and making an argument based on that evidence that they've found in the text, and then relating it. How does this relate to my life? How would, how would it relate to me, my friends and family, my peers? And how does it relate to a, a, a book that we're reading? They had to think about multiple sources and to be able to tie those all together. In my opinion, citizens of Iceland shouldn't have to choose a name from a government list. I believe they should get to name the child whatever they like. It is supposed to be allowed that child would like his or her name and be comfortable with it. To, be, to me, being able to choose my name changed my life and made it easier. Even though some people can't pronounce it right, it would be better than a typical name and an unwanted name. Lastly, this connects to the outsiders because if there was creases were to have a law stating they could choose a name from the list, the creases name such as Pony Boy wouldn't be able to be under Excellent. Uh, what was one of the what was one of the main things that Paola said about her opinion and how it relates to her life? I thought there was something really strong that she stated about her name. In my opinion, I feel like regardless of where you, what you're, where you're at in, in your strengths and you're in the common core um, and applying the common core and becoming an expert with them, um, I, I feel like this is a kind of a, a skill that anybody can use. It's something that the students know that they're, they're going to be expected to do something that's really enriching and deep and complex. Most teachers do starters, but just a few simple tweaks and now they're really engaging and, and I keep going back to it, rich and complex and they look like what we need to be doing as Common Core teachers. <laughs>